How's it going everybody? My name is Dan and this is DTM Design. As you can tell by the title or my t-shirt, today's video is Lego based. Uh, so what I wanted to do for this video was um, I wanted to do just designing some Lego sets. Now there's a lot of software online that help you design Lego kits and you can render the photos and then all that. But you know, you, looking at the digital version isn't as fun as bringing it fully to life. Um, I'm not actually buying the pieces for the kits, but I will be putting together the boxes. I did a lot of box design for this video, and we're going to be getting those printed out and assembling all the boxes. It's not just going to be one model kit or one Lego kit. It's going to be a series. Uh, this series is going to be based off my work. It's a rapid prototyping company. Um, I had to build a lot of this off memory because we're not allowed to take photos of stuff while we're there. We're not going to be out here, unfortunately, working in the shop. We're going to be back in the office working on the computer mainly for this one. And also, I'd just like to shout out two people that have been supporting me from pretty much the beginning of these videos, these newer ones. Uh, Don Jones and BMX Bubby. You guys are awesome. You guys are always commenting on my videos. I love it. Thank you so much. Let's get right into the video. And if you could, drop a like, subscribe, check out some of my other videos. I'd really appreciate that as well. All right, guys. So pretty much I started out by just opening up the program. It's called uh, stud.io. Uh, it's created by the website Bricklink, I believe. I'm not sure. Uh, Bricklink is where you can, you know, find uh, individual pieces of Lego and buy them, uh, and it's linked to this program. So if you're done creating your set, you can hit shop, and it'll find all the pieces for you and uh, get all the pricing and all that stuff. It's pretty expensive uh, to do it that way. So just forewarning if you have an idea of trying this yourself. Uh, but first, I decided to go off and just. Uh, you know, create the minifigures. I did that for almost all the sets, was to start out with the minifigures. Now this is the last set I'm designing. So I already designed the three other sets before this. Um, I say this one to last because it was the most complicated. This is the CNC uh, seven access uh, machine. So it pretty much like, you know, you can put a block of material in there and it'll see it, CNC it down to your 3D model or design that you created on the computer. Um, it's a way that rapid prototyping companies uh, create new parts and make molds with it and do all that stuff. Um, so yeah, but to this specific build, I kind of just started off. So I'm basing it off the two workers that are in the machine area, uh, one being Ryan and one being Hector. Uh, Ryan's the one uh, in the black hat and all black. That's what he usually wears. Um, and then for Hector, he usually has some jeans on and some type of flannel. So I found the best torso for that. And started creating and finishing his toolbox that's always rolling around in their uh, machine shop area. And then I went ahead and started working on the main structure of the machine. Uh, playing around with it a little bit, seeing how wide I want to make it. Um, that's where the minifigures come in. They help give a sense of scale. Um, you know, and Lego is, it's kind of like here, in, you know, scale is, you know, can be interpreted in many different ways in Lego, I would feel like. Like, some stuff is a lot smaller, but, you know, it still fits a minifigure and just gives you the idea. Um, creating this in, like, actual scale and doing all the math would probably be, you know, this thing could be pretty big or whatnot. So I kind of just eyeballed it, you know, make it look close enough to the machine and all that uh, to give a good representation of it. It doesn't have to be, like, the exact size or anything like that. So I went ahead and started just playing with everything, getting the base, uh, doing the control panels. I was kind of looking at some of the slope parts uh, to do the doors. And as you can see, I'm still playing with doors. The doors and the mechanics within this machine were probably the hardest part of doing it all. Um, obviously, I didn't film every single second of this because it's hours. It's several hours of work putting these Lego sets together. So as you can see, I jumped really far up there. I had the walls and the structure done and most of the interior uh, little windows that the machine has. And then, you know, like the side pieces of the side, like the tubing and the wiring that's all part of the machine. I don't have like an actual photo of the machine. Um, like I said, we can't take photos at our work. Uh, and then here I'm just trying to figure out how I can get these doors to like have a function where they actually slide open. And like I said, so I played with the doors for quite a while. So the design you're looking at me build right now is not really the finished design at all. Um, I kind of start getting there, but yeah, uh, this was like a pretty complex build for me i mean i don't build lego all the time i last time i kind of built lego was uh you know a kid and i believe we've all had experience building lego so we know you know if you can get creative enough you can do a lot of things and if you look online you can look at crazy stuff that people build um and it's insane the kind of uh looks and stuff they can get by just manipulating the brick in a certain way and just thinking about it but 
after hours, I finally figured out I got the little top piece. I got all the little like treads and uh, belts that are within the machine. Now it's not an exact replication of it. It's obviously, um, I took some artistic liberties while doing that, but that's pretty much the machine it has little doors and lights. And then I did record some of the box creating, but it got lost somewhere. So here's just a quick look at all the different uh, sets I designed. Uh, just different parts of the company or things that are like around the whole company like that yellow box is just like a fire thing um, so then once I got all those ready went to the FedEx offices to get it printed now uh, I didn't get the exact thick cardstock that I wanted it was a little thinner I didn't really like specify that to the guy um, and also being through Kinko's it's not going to be the highest quality print they're also not technically allowed to be printing stuff with the Lego logo on it it's a copyright thing but anyways I started cutting them up and getting them ready to go uh, like I said, the print quality wasn't great, so the black isn't like a super rich black, but I feel once they're together, I can Photoshop these things and make them look real nice. Um, for the video, they'll do all right for just the fun build aspect of it, and you guys can check out uh, creating a box and, you know, I guess building your own Lego set. Uh, so after I cut them out, I kind of grabbed this one, and I did a little pre-fold off-camera of how just to test the folding uh, that I wanted to do. And then, so pretty much I would just use the back and score that twice. Now, when I've done other boxes, I've done it on the front so I can see the the lines that I created in the software to help know where to fold. Um, but then you get this, like, slit and you see all this white, you know, of the box when you fold it, if I don't know if that makes sense. But doing it this way, folding it from the inside gives a nice curve, like the real boxes you see from Lego. Uh, this one I accidentally did cut off the extra flap to hold it together, so I'm going to have to recreate that on my own. Uh, but I went ahead and just started doing that. Um, I did notice that uh, all these boxes don't have, like, if you can see that part that I'm grabbing right now and folding, it doesn't have any flaps on the side. And I thought the little flaps right below that from on each end would be enough to hold it up. But clearly there's a big gap from this top panel, and you'll see it later. So I had to create, uh, you know, use some paper to create hinges. But here's all the boxes folded and ready to go. For the most part, uh, all I have to do now is kind of glue them together, uh, add on the little hinges that I was talking about that are missing. But first off, I just went ahead and glued the simplest thing, the flap that I did create to put them together and just did the flat gluing of that. It was simple. And then as you can see here, I made a hinge with some of the leftover cardstock. And with this box, uh, I didn't leave the tracing lines or like the fold lines visible enough on the box. So I really had to eyeball a lot of it. And the only thing that happened there was that I cut them a little too short. Thankfully, I have a little bit of this black left over from just cutting up the other boxes to be able to kind of blend that in better. So as you can see, the flap was a little too short. I used a little angle fold and just extended it. It doesn't look the greatest, but that was the only box that had that major issue because of not being able to see the fold lines on the, on the side that I wanted to. And then so I just went around and started making all those little hinges to help uh, give the box a little more support and be able to hold together and look more like an official Lego box. Um, so yeah, here's all four boxes. Now, it's not going to be complete unless I throw in some actual um, parts. And so here we go. I grabbed my old box of Legos out of a closet. Haven't seen these things in quite a while. Some plastic baggies that I had. And I just started filling up the random plastic bags. And I, I wanted to put them within the boxes and seal them up. So when you picked up the boxes, it has that classic Lego sound shake to it. Um, and also, each of these sets is a different number of pieces. So while doing that, for this one, I didn't put too many pieces in it. Because it's a small box and it's a small little kit. So there's not going to be a lot of room. Uh, some of the other kits, like the CNC machine shop that you watched me build... Um, that one I put a lot more bricks into because it's like a 500 count piece uh, set. So that was the build. I put it all together, finished product. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this.
All right, everybody, that was today's build video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I had a lot of fun putting together these little Lego sets and designing them all and going through the whole process with you guys. Uh, if you could please leave a comment, like, or even subscribe, I'd really appreciate it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.